May you find happiness and peace. And may your home stand the test of time. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be reacting to Jasley Gil Ailton Life and Work. This is part two of two. So without further ado, let's get started. Welcome back to Matters of Faith. We're in Wimbledon, London with Sheikh Hassan uh, Geiton. Many people call him Sheikh Hassan because Geiton um, has actually also worked in the London Central Mosque for over 20 years editing uh, a quarterly called mm -hmm. the Islamic Quarterly. That's right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what was your experience with the British Muslim community and how did it go together with Sufism? It's not known to be a Sufi mosque, the London Central Mosque. It was, I think, extremely interesting because it was very easy for Europeans who adopt a Sufi path to distance themselves from the Ummah, that is, from the community of Islam. Now that, I think, is wrong. We may find a majority of our fellow Muslims <laughs> misbehave a lot and can be very tiresome. Nonetheless, we are part of the same body, and that is something fundamentally. And therefore, I think it was very useful for me to have this close contact with um, ordinary practicing Muslims. Because obviously working in a mosque, um, these were on the whole people who practiced their religion. And a huge variety, obviously. I had my office there, I worked three days a week, I just carried on. And um, I came to the conclusion, the common English saying that people may prefer the devil they know to any stranger, that that is rather an Arab habit. They knew me, they knew me then very well. Um, it was useful for them to have an Englishman on the staff, after as a kind of go-between between, between um, them and the host community. And, um, well, they knew me, so, you know. And any inquiries about Sufism, they would refer to you? That's right, yes, yes. They were glad of a chance to <laughs> shift that onto my shoulders <laughs> and so on. Yeah, if we look back into time, um, y you were beautifully describing in your book, uh, Islam and the Destiny of Man, how Islam spread like a wildfire. Um, you know, within a hundred years it reached from one empire to the next, from China yes, to yes. Africa and so on. Um, what was it? I mean, if we look at, you know, the state of affairs nowadays, surely it couldn't have spread if it was like that. So what was it at the time that, you know, made it spread so much? Well, of course, um, the prophet is reported to have said that his generation was the best. And then the next, and then the next, and next, and next, and next. And obviously going downhill. Yeah. <laughs> We've gone downhill. <laughs> but, um, <coughs> it was largely by example. Now, it's a myth that Islam was spread by, con by conquest, by the sword. It wasn't, except in one sense, that, of course, the New Muslims, the New Age, were so full of faith, so exuberant, so rushing out, wanting to conquer, and so on. They did conquer many territories. Now, they, they, they never forced anybody to embrace their religion. On the contrary, many of them felt, you know, it's our religion, we don't want to share it. But nonetheless, some um, obviously people who wanted the best jobs and so on and so forth, so an interest in becoming Muslim. So from that minor point of view, um, conquest aided the spread. But in the main, and this can be attributed to Sufi traders, particularly in South India, in Malaysia, in Indonesia, these men were simple traders in many cases, or in most cases, in fact, Sufis, going, going about their business peacefully. And the local people, the indigenous people, 
who on the whole lived in some disorder, saw these good men and thought, well, these are the first really good people we've met. Mm. Why is that? Of course, they're Muslim. And so you had these massive conversions, and that does apply particularly to, as I say, Malaysia and Indonesia. And um, it's only much later that you had extremist forms of Islam. How did Sufism um, attract people? You said you were, you know, almost converted through Su Sufism. You know, your faith was strengthened. Um, oh, yes. All these people you just mentioned were inspired by Sufi traders. What is it about um, Sufism that inspires people? Um, two things, I suppose. One, obviously, is that this is a very effective means of approaching God, of becoming as aware of Him as we are capable of doing. Secondly, Sufism has always been a path of peace, charity, mercy, concern for others. And these are immensely attractive qualities and alas, rather rare qualities in the world today. Just uh, for clarity, um, Sufism is solely related to Islam or yes. where did it originate? No, it originates <coughs> in Islam. Um, people confuse their terms. And this is something that always annoys me a bit because it's, as Orwell taught us, it's very important to get the right words applied to the right realities. Of course, mysticism, of one sort or another, one shape or another, has existed for as long as one knows. I mean, you know, way, 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 way back. But it takes a different colouring, different emphasis, according to the cultural and the religious context in which it is found. And it therefore had inevitably to arise within Islam and it did so with an Islamic colouring. To understand this better, can you define the nature of God in Islam? Um, well, you see, this is always difficult because um, we know that he cannot be defined. That is the basic principle. Having said this, we have to have some idea in our heads of what we mean by God. And according to a very important hadith, a very important hadith could see, an inspired saying of the Prophet, God has said, uh, roughly, I hope I'm getting the words right, I am in the image that my servant has of me. And this can only be an aspect of the divine mercy. So, we ha in order to worship, you've got to have some idea of who or what you're worshipping. You can't worship the totally un unknown. And at the same time, in the Quran, you have these 99 beautiful names of God, revealed names. And these obviously can be explored almost indefinitely to show the divine qualities. But because they cover the whole spectrum, they also inevitably cover contradictions. And in Sufism, uh, those divine names are sometimes um, almost stepping stones to, to God or uh, are they used somehow um, they are. to acquire, imbibe the qualities of God. Yes, oh yes. Um, so how can Sufism lead to God, in a sense? Um, remember that uh, Sufism is divided into various turuk, or tariqas, as mm -hmm. called. And um, each derives its strength.
strength from some great sheikh, some great teacher. And in each case, there are slightly, slightly different techniques. It doesn't really matter much. Um, some, for example, will invoke La ilaha illallah, the declaration of divine unity. Others will simply invoke the name of God, Allah. Others will call upon particular divine names, Ya Latif, Ya Rahman, Ya Karim, and so on. Um, these are unimportant differences because there could not just be one way of doing things. There could not just be one technique, I don't like the word technique, one manner of approaching God. There have to be countless ones. And indeed, it is said often enough that there is a way for each individual and that no two individual ways are quite identical. There are as many ways or paths to God as their hearts. Um, exactly. Almost. Exactly. But one thing they all have in common is that they, are, they bring about transformation somehow. Can well, you explain this? it's difficult to talk about transformation because um, God alone can read hearts. This is one of the most fundamental things. It's something that always made it difficult for me personally to judge people. If I don't, I can't see into their hearts. And um, you cannot know, basically, if somebody has really been transformed or not. It may be that in an extreme crisis, you can see by the way they deal with the crisis, if they are different to the person that they were previously. But that is why in Islam, testing trials are so important. Well, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Christian. Okay, it was wonderful seeing you. Bless thank you, you for inviting us to your okay. home and inspiring us with so many special insights. I hope you enjoyed this edition of Matters of Faith from Gay Eaton's home, and we look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye bye. Wow, guys, this is awesome. You know, I I really enjoyed myself, and I I wanted it to continue. You know, as long as possible. I did not want to interrupt this video because I I, I discovered he was talking. You know, a lot, and due to his tone, I wanted the video to sink into everyone watching it before I give my thoughts on it. Anyway, I I love. The father, he went, he, he spoke a lot about, his vid about you know, um, Sufism and how you can communicate with God. You know, he made mention of the different means, you know, there's no one way to communicate to God. You know, that's why even if we can't picture who he is, I mean, talking to, I mean, God, you can picture who he is. But based on the name he has given us to worship him, you know, the name he has, you know, asked us to call him. You know, the Christian will say, Afan and Omega, the beginning and the end, Yahweh, the first and last, and so many other names, you see. Those are, you know, what we channel our attention to why praying to him or why asking for things from him. You know, because it's difficult for you to worship a being that you've not seen before, or you worship a person you've not seen before, but you have deep faith in this person. That is that is where faith comes in, you know. These are faith is evidence of things hoped for. And you know things not seen, and I I love this so so much. I love how calm and how cool he is, and you know, and when he made mention of, um, you know the likes of Prophet Muhammad, he said his generation were the best, so they try to win more souls from God, and after that the next generation felt like yes our generation is the best, so we have to do more, and that is how Islamic belief has been spreading all over the world, and I think that's. Also, how Christianity has also been spreading because everyone has this mandate to win souls for God, and that is what we are all doing up to tomorrow, up to the next generation, up more and more generation coming would want to go out there and preach the gospel and win souls from God because that is it. The more you win souls from God, the more 
you know fulfilling you feel deep down you know because in the bible it says when a soul when a soul repents there is a celebration in heaven you know because a soul have repented and he made mention of you know sometimes we don't see the heart only god sees the heart so you can only you know preach the gospel to this person and let the holy spirit you know continue to work on the person to the person see the light or see the reason why he should turn away from his evil way and i, I believe him because you know someone might talk to you even our parents when you know, when our parents advise us sometimes we decide willingly not to take those advice and deep down they feel like yes they've spoken enough but everything depends on how you are being convinced to believe you know what the advice they are giving you that is it you know when you are preaching to someone telling the person about the gospel and why they should convert and why they should give their life to christ you know sometimes they don't get it so it's left for the holy spirit to convince them to bring them forth to you know change them make them a new person that is it anyway i love this so so much i i cannot go into details on how muslim you know do their thing but i feel it's more or less you know the way christian do their thing and i, I love the fact that everything they spoke about they did not make mention of other belief you know he, he's stuck with his belief you know why and how he feels things should be done and that is it you know and i feel i enjoy his conversation more because you know he was just flowing with english i think he made mention of um a part in the quran something how they call god you know allah and um something I've, I've forgotten it please so i felt like it's just few things he pitched from the quran and put it inside he just went clean english and you know he went in a way that even a layman will understand where he's heading to anyway i love this so so much and i want to check out more videos from gil if you have any recommendation let me know in the comment section if this is the first time visiting the channel click on the subscribe button thanks for watching and remember this